Hello, hello everybody. I am so excited to be back with you here. Two years later, remember two years ago, we were all in LA together. It was this fabulous luncheon. Thank you, Melissa's Produce, for having me back. Uh, so today, Michelle Dudash, registered dietitian, Cordon Bleu certified chef, and author of my brand new baby, Clean Eating Kitchen, the low carb Mediterranean cookbook. So two years ago, we were talking about clean eating for busy families, revised and expanded. And now I have a whole new batch of recipes to share with you from my new book. They're inspired from my travels to Mediterranean countries, growing up Lebanese in a small town in Wisconsin named Fond du Lac, and uh, those recipes from my grandmother's and uh, you know some restaurants I've been to that I've turned into low-carb Mediterranean renditions, making them easy for home cooks and healthy too. Uh, so I'm broadcasting today from Carmel, Indiana. Yes, I moved. Actually, let's see. When, I, when we were together last time, I actually, yeah, I was already in Indiana. Before that, I was in Scottsdale, neighboring. We were neighbors back in the day. Uh, so broadcasting from my home kitchen. So this is actually the kitchen that you see on the last cookbook. And we're going to have some fun today. So in my new book, uh, you're going to find over 100 recipes spanning from appetizers to tons of salads, soups. We have a completely plant-based chapter in here. We have a meat and poultry chapter. We have, of course, seafood, tons and tons of different seafood recipes. And I tried to use seafood that of course, a lot of people, the really popular ones like shrimp, but also there's like a calamari recipe in there. There's a few other random ones that were inspired by my travels. Of course, oh yeah, my grandmother's Lebanese kousa, but we're using zucchini. <laughs> and then we have a vegetable sides chapter. And then we finish off, of course, we did not forget dessert. And in my desserts, I use a lot of almond flour, fresh fruits, dark chocolate. So there's something for all of your cravings. So we have two different recipes that we're making. And remember, of course, we're, this is broadcasting and I'll be on social media uh, so we can all talk and chat. Uh, so it'll be a lot of fun. Now, the recipe that I'm making, the first one, we're making two. The first one is my sheet pan chickpea and broccoli dinner. I love this recipe because it's so great for weeknights, busy weeknights. You put everything on the pan, vegetables, plant protein, there's even some fruit, you know, bell pepper counts as a fruit. We pop that in the oven, so easy and delicious. And then the second recipe is great for an appetizer or a snack or even a light meal, which are my mini bell peppers stuffed with turkey and pistachios, love it. So I'm gonna take you through this. Maybe you're cooking along, awesome. You'll have two fabulous uh, recipes to enjoy today. So let's get started. Okay, so this first recipe, my sheet pan chickpea and broccoli dinner. Love this recipe, super easy to make. So the first thing we do, we take our chickpeas. Of course, I'm using Melissa's Produce. They're peeled and steamed chickpeas. Love those. Just pour that onto the pan. We have some broccoli. And thank you, Melissa's, by the way, for sending all of this amazing produce that we see here today. We have our broccoli that's been chopped. Now, of, by the way, I'm just dumping this all on a sheet pan. If you wanted to use a big mixing bowl, go for it. Uh, I don't like washing dishes. Who does? <laughs> Unless my husband is washing dishes at night. So I just toss it right on the pan and that's totally fine. But if you feel more comfortable with a bowl, go ahead and get a bowl. Now we also have some mushrooms. Now the mushrooms, we have some gorgeous mushrooms that Melissa sent me. We have some shiitakes. We have some maitakes. We have some portobello mushrooms. So I just chop those up. Now, of course, you can use any mushroom available, whatever looks good. Uh, button mushrooms, cremini mushrooms, whatever you have available. We have some chopped bell pepper. And I, uh, you know, I think it's really important as a recipe developer, I always make sure to use the whole piece. Like this is one bell pepper. This is a package of mushrooms, how they typically come at the store. Then people aren't left with what, what am I supposed to do with what am I supposed to do with this half? So I, I, that's kind of a, a thing with me. This is half of an onion that's been diced up. Onion, though, of course, we know that's going to last longer in our fridge, so I'm okay with that. 
<laughs> okay, and then, and you of course, you could use any onion. Now for the spices, this is, of course, one of the fun parts because you can really change up the flavor profile. I'm grinding up coriander, by the way. This is whole coriander. Oh, it smells so good already. Oh, yum. So I'm grinding this up. Of course, whole spices, they're gonna last a lot longer in your pantry, two to five years. Uh, this smells so good, and it's gonna be way more fragrant. But of course, if you have ground, use ground. I use that too. I use that in my spice packet company, the Dash Dinners. I use ground and, and some whole too. So we're gonna add that. The recipe, the inspiration from this, by the way, can't, comes from this blog called Bad Manners. I don't know if you've heard of it, uh, but that was more of a Southwesty uh, themed recipe. But I just found myself making this over and over. So I'm like, well, let's do a Mediterranean flour. So I swapped out some of the vegetables, added different spices. This is smoked paprika. And my husband, who by the way is a meat eater, he loves this recipe. He even asks for it. This is a totally vegan recipe. So it's great for everybody. It's delicious. This is some minced garlic. And then if you like some heat, go ahead and add some crushed red pepper. And the, the amount I added, not much. I think it's like an eighth of a teaspoon. We'll add some uh, ground black pepper. But if you do like it spicy, by all means, add more. And then we'll add in. So instead of salt in this recipe, I use liquid aminos. You've probably seen these. You probably might have these in your fridge. You could use soy sauce, tamari. We'll put on a couple tablespoons. And now we drizzle it with extra virgin olive oil. Don't be shy. It's about a couple tablespoons. And then we'll toss this together. So I like to use two spatulas. Again, if you already, if you used a bowl, go ahead and toss it in the bowl. But I am saving on a big thing to wash and I'm just putting this on the sheet pan. Yeah, it's pretty easy to do it if you have two big spatulas. I do have this lined with just a little bit of parchment. It just kind of makes our cleanup a little easier. Okay, and now we just spread that out. And you want this in a single layer, as, as even layer, because of course we want to have even cooking. So I'm using, this is a restaurant half sheet pan. If your pans at home are smaller, you probably want to divide this into two pans. Okay, now we will just take this, pop it in a 425 degree convection oven. Okay, so this has been in the oven for 20 minutes. So at this point, it smells so good already. We'll toss this together. And then we'll put this back in the oven. We're just tossing this because the outside vegetables are getting nice and caramelized. The, the ones on the middle are more just kind of steaming. So that's why we stir it up a little bit, spread it back out. And then we'll put this back in the oven for 10 more minutes just to finish it off. And that's, it's, everything's pretty much cooked at this point. It's just getting a little more caramelization. All right. 10 more minutes we go. So it's been 10 more minutes. Now it's ready for the finishing touches. So what we do now, we add in our fresh chopped parsley and then we're gonna add in some lemon juice. These herbs, some herbs are another big part of the Mediterranean diet. Spices as well. Now we'll take half of a lemon, squeeze this on top. I always like to use fresh lemon juice at the end of cooking. It's just gonna give it a brighter taste. Now the zest, you can add that earlier on in the cooking process. And now we just toss this one more time before we plate it. Oh, you guys, it smells so good. Make sure you post your final dishes. If you were cooking along today, make sure you post your final dishes. So I can see your creations, and I know you're all chefies out there, so you maybe you may, maybe you made some substitutions, and that's perfectly fine. I find I, I make substitutions all the time, depending on what, what I have on hand. Carrots are also really nice in this, actually. Okay. 
So we'll just plate this up. I like to use a bowl for this dish. And the cool thing, I mean, you can, this is, this is all vegetables. You have your vegetables, you have your protein from the chickpeas, which also count as a vegetable. So I like to enjoy a nice big bowl. And then we will cut our avocado. These beautiful, perfectly ripe avocados. I don't know if you know this. The perfectly ripe avocado is, it's a mix of green and that dark, dark color. And I really like to use a third of an avocado on this. That's a third of an avocado is the official serving size for an avocado. So we'll take one of these nice. This is a quarter, but just how I cut it. Okay. We'll just, I like to dice it right in the skin. The skin is kind of like nature's Biore strip. That's how I like to look at it. And then if there, if there are any brown spots, they kind of just stick to the skin. So you could just peel, see how we're peeling that right off? Perfection. And then you can just plate that right on there. So you have your creaminess, you have your earthiness. So delish. Yummy. Mmm. I like an avocado on every single bite. Yum. Mmm, here we go. Mmm, so good. The parsley has this like fresh little bright note. We've got the creaminess from the avocado and the mushrooms. Really earthy. Mmm, I just love this dish. The onions are still a little bit crunchy. I love them. Just the right amount of bite. So good. Now, I'll use this for leftovers, no problem. I've even turned leftovers from a few days into a soup. I just add vegetable broth and then you have like a vegetable soup. So. All sorts of options. You can also put this in tortillas. It's, it's really versatile. Mm. Yum. The next recipe that we're making are my mini bell peppers stuffed with turkey and pistachios. These little bell peppers, I absolutely love these. They're great for snacking and just always having a nutritious snack on hand. Uh, they're also great in baked recipes. So that's where I kind of got the inspiration. I always like to keep these in my fridge. So I decided to stuff them with ground lean turkey, pistachios, and then I add some spices that are really warming like cumin, coriander, and cinnamon. So let's get started. The first thing we do is season our turkey mixture. So what we have going here, we have some cinnamon we add to the bowl, some cumin, some coriander, some salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and then we'll add two teaspoons of red wine vinegar. That just gives it a little pop. And we just stir this all together. And now our meat is seasoned. Now we take our adorable little mini bell peppers and we'll cut off the tops. I love these for snacking. Super convenient, sweet, delicious. And then we just finish cutting out the membranes. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna get out the seeds. One more step with the little bell peppers is take a paring knife and just poke a little hole in the bottom. That little air gap will make stuffing the peppers easier. Next step is dipping our stuffed bell peppers into the pistachios. And you don't have to be, uh, you know, you, you want to be generous with the pistachios. So you want them completely covered. And so you just dip those in. These will give it a nice crunch and they'll roast even further in the oven. And they're not, it's a nice crispy, crunchy contrast to the bell peppers and the turkey inside. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, this is a great protein packed snack. We have the protein from the pistachios and from the turkey. Final step is drizzling the peppers with some extra virgin olive oil. This helps crisp up the skins a little bit. And of course, olive oil, great for you. Then what we do is sprinkle it with a little bit of sea salt, just to season the peppers a little bit more. Now we'll just pop these in the oven. You know they're done when they're sizzling really aggressively. The peppers are tender and the turkey is somewhat solid when you give it a little squeeze. Okay, so I, I pulled these out a little bit ago, so I'm gonna give these a taste. They're so delish. I'll just, I'll take a little small one and just pop that right in my mouth. So good. I'm gonna give it a, mm. You guys. If you didn't make this yet today, it's a must. So good. Crunchy. I can taste the spices. Bright. Mm. <laughs> There's a pepper on my lip. <laughs> so good. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's presentation. I hope you love eating the recipes from my book. Now, if you need any recipes for any work that you're doing or any images, feel free to get in touch and my publisher and I can get that for you. Michelle at do-nutrition.com is my email. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook. I know I'm already following a lot of you already. Uh, so be sure to tag me and we'll make sure, I'll make sure to share whatever content that you're posting about uh, the recipes and today's event. And uh, yeah, just remember the Mediterranean, the low carb Mediterranean is a lifestyle. It's not a sh meant to be a short term diet. It's about eating more fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, extra virgin olive oil, and then some seafood. And then, you know, moving towards the top of the pyramid, some chicken, some meat, uh, some dairy, and there's even room for a little wine. Uh, I want to thank Melissa's Produce for hosting this awesome event today and uh, helping organize everything. I always love uh, getting together with food media. So yes, let's keep in touch, keep the conversation going, and hey, who knows, maybe I'll see you in another few years. <laughs> Take care, bye.